abstract of a paper is used to give a brief synopsis of what is going to be explained in the following pages. With this abstract, we're able to see that they have discovered a new beta-galactosidase in the Anthrobacter species 20b. This new cold-adapted bacteria produces a beta-galactosidase that is 1,053 amino acids long with a molecular mass of 113,000 kilodaltons. Beyond these two measurements, they show the beta-galactosidase structure both with a native and SDS page gel, which I'll explain from the later figures. Finally, the abstract wraps up the optimal activity in regards to both the pH and the temperature. In order to identify the structural components of the beta-galactosidase, the paper first shows the isolation and purification process of the enzyme. This is available on figure one. When looking at figure one, we see that there are four main columns stretching across where the far, light, far right is the marker. On the very left column is the cell extract. And this was obtained from 5 grams of fresh wet Anthrobacter species 20b. You see that there is a lot of debris located in the cell extract column, but in order to become more defined, they pool these fractions and run it on an ion exchange column. Specifically, they use a DEAE cephrose column equilibrated with 50 millimolar potassium phosphate buffer, and then they wash this with a buffer supplemented with 0 to 0.35 molar NaCl. This solution shows more defined bands, but as we see in columns 3 and 4, the purification process is increased. After the ion exchange, the active fractions are collected and run on an infinity matrix. From this, we see only two bands in lane 3, which I'll explain later to what those actually are. Finally, they go through a molecular sieving process for their final purification step, and from this they're able to get a single band around 160 kilodaltons. This entire gel is an SDS page gel, which stands for sodium dodecyl sulfate, and this linearizes proteins and removes quaternary structure. Because of this, we only see one band in the fourth column. The isolation and purification step was further analyzed in figure 3 by using a native page gel. This is different from the SDS page gel in figure 2 because a native page gel has the running of proteins in their native state to preserve quaternary structure. That is why in lane 1 we see a single band around 440 kilodaltons. From this, we are able to tell that beta-galactosidase from Anthrobacter species 20b is a tetrameric protein made up of four individual subunits. After understanding the new structure of the beta-galactosidase enzyme, they next tested the effects of pH and temperature on the activity of the enzyme. Looking at figure 4, they're able to show that the pH relative activity as well as the pH stability of the enzyme are optimized around a pH range of 6 to 8 where you can see a constant decrease of both the relative activity and the stability outside of this range. The group now focuses on the activity of the new beta-galactosidase enzyme in regards to temperature. Figure 5 is especially important to us because this is what separates it from other beta-galactosidase enzymes. The square is referring to the temperature activity but it's only labeled temperature where the triangle below is used to describe the thermal stability. As we can see at 0 degrees, well they used 4 as their lowest degree point, there is a 50% relative activity where there is a maximum relative activity for this enzyme at around 25 degrees Celsius. 
Now comparing that to the thermal stability, we see that the enzyme is 100% stable and it continues to be 100% stable up until around 35 degrees Celsius. This helps separate it from other enzymes used. So though this paper does a great job in identifying the structure of this new beta-galactosidase enzyme, as well as shows the pH and thermal stability of this enzyme, there are a few holes in this paper that I wanted to kind of elaborate on. The first hole is though we have this enzyme, it actually has a low stability when it is not bound to the cell surface like it is in the in vivo model. So it is not a well secreted enzyme. This is a kind of roadblock because this will make it more difficult to use the enzyme for industrialized processes to remove lactose from milk product. The next hole in this paper is with the understanding of the thiol functioning group. They know that this is important in the paper, but they are not able to explain why the thiol group is of importance for this specific beta-galactosidase enzyme. The last hole that I kind of found in the paper was in regards to the temperature graph, specifically figure 5. From the temperature graph, they had a temperature stability as well as a relative activity at, at a specific set pH where it's possible that maybe if they modulated the pH they would be able to get a enzyme that functioned better with a higher relative activity at lower temperatures. Though I can't prove this, it might be interesting to check out in order to improve the efficacy of this enzyme in removing lactose from milk product. So that was my covering of the new beta-galactosidase enzyme found in the Antarctic Athrobacter species 20b. I hope you enjoyed my analysis of the paper and thank you again for tuning into Science with Chris. If you have any paper suggestions that you would like me to go over, please leave it in the comment section below or just direct message me. And if you want to learn about more papers as well in the future, click the subscribe button and watch where this channel goes.